Hey friends, it's John. You're the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, also the name of my website, my Patreon, and my Facebook group. I've got a new development, something for your toolbox, something uh, that you're going to want to tuck away for a rainy day, like I've got going on here in, in Pennsylvania. So for perspective, I'd like to try to anticipate your questions. Why am I showing you this? I've given you several options for foot loops. For example, this is the non-jamming 523 JRB Ascender tied onto a rappel ring with a piece of webbing. I can use this as a foot loop in ascent, right? So I'm just a few inches off the ground, but I've got my full body weight on it. I can climb and then I can advance that. But maybe you haven't learned how to tie that yet or haven't perfected it yet. So that's not in your arsenal of tools. My preferred foot loop is the JRB Garda Hitch foot loop, which provides integrated redundancy. And again, I'm not taking through all the details here, right? Of all of the devices that I've shown you, the one that impresses me the most is that the Garda Hitch, with just two carabiners and very high reliability, whether you're running one rope or two ropes through it, provides a reliable foot or, or, or rope grab and therefore foot loop. So I can, I can stand up on this and advance it. And you've seen me do that many times. And again, this is my preferred option because I've got integrated redundancy on it. But let's say you didn't build this yet or what if, what if you forgot it? and you showed up on your vacation day at your favorite tree and you're fumbling around and you realize you don't have your foot loop. Or what if you're not even a saddle hunter at all? What if you're um, a traditional tree stand hunter and you are in a safety harness and you've fallen out of your tree stand or it's collapsed? Uh, you know, whatever situation has gotten you here, you're hanging from your fall arrest harness and you've got to pay attention that uh, you don't have a lack of blood circulation to your legs. You want to avoid suspension trauma. And the way to do that is to get some uh, weight on your feet. And what if you didn't have your foot strap for that? Well, I'm, I'm going to show you something here, which is really quite astounding. Another application for the Munter friction hitch. So in my bag of emergency supplies that I always keep in a, in a Ziploc bag here on my left hip, I always have an extra pear shaped carabiner. A particular brand doesn't really matter. I like to have a, a triple action carabiner rather than, than a screw gate. But I'm going to show you how a Munter friction hitch that you already know how to tie because I've showed you how to tie it. It's been my most popular video. Single rope rappel on the Munter friction hitch. Also works with a doubled rope. But here's another application for the Munter. Really quite simple. Being right handed I make an underhand loop to the left and put my carabiner through two strands. I've got, I've got a munter. I attach my load here. And there's different variations, right, for more friction or less friction. It's got this property that I, I call it painting. It's like using a paintbrush where you can paint it up and down the line. Now, depending on the stiffness of the rope, uh, that's easier or more difficult to do. I'm using 10 millimeter rope here. It's advertised as nine, but it measured out at 10. But watch what I can do with a munter. I'm gonna put a loop around my leg and I am going to form a muncher here. It doesn't seem to matter which you know strand is left or right. It all seems to work out. Just form a muncher with both strands and look it doesn't slide. It's like an end loop. It's like I tied a big alpine butterfly. It's like I tied a great big figure eight end loop because I can stand on it. But watch what else I can do. I can adjust its position. So I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna move up just a couple of inches. Now I can, I can paint this up. I'm gonna loosen so there's no slack on it. And you know, I'm gonna use a few, a few muscles here, but I'm gonna pull this up, I'm pull it up high. Then I'll flip it back down. And then holding the carabiner and pulling slack out, I just shortened it. I'm self-filming here today, so I'm going to go out of your field of view quick. Let's see it again from scratch. 
and you might have to readjust it a couple of times on the way up if a couple of loops get uh, you know if you get any spins in it but this time I put it around coming up on the inside of my foot I'm forming a munter with both strands putting the carabiner in and as soon as I put load on my feet on my left foot it holds I'm going to disappear from your field of view and then we'll take you in the lab and we'll show you how to tie it. Okay, so let's review how to form the munter. As a right-handed individual, I prefer to operate my carabiners this way. And so I will make a munter in this fashion. I will make an underhand loop to the left and then bring the top around forming a loop and I put the carabiner through two strands and always ensure that the descending strand goes on the spine, not the gate of my carabiner. That's the way I fashion it for a rappel operation. And of course, there's different variants. You can see the other video about that. So that's a munter for a right-handed person. And well, this is that painting move I, I call where I can just kind of move it up and down the line. It just kind of, now if I put tension on it, it won't move. And it has this feature where it kind of pops. It pops and reorients. Okay. Let's do that for a left-handed person. I'm not too, I'm not too good at this. Uh, yeah, I always tend to just, there you go. That's for a left-handed person who would put their carabiner in with their left hand the opposite way. But it's still, it's, st it's still a munter. Okay. You've seen me repel on two strands in the JRB stationary doubled rope method we use two strands and we form a munter that way so we're we're used to forming a munter on two strands we're used to that and we disappear and it's, we can still paint on it now this is eight millimeter rope you're looking at eight millimeter rope here on the left a little easier to work with this on the right is is, is uh, advertised as nine but it's uh, closer to ten okay now Let's see how we form the end loop. Let's get this one out of the way so we don't distract you. I form the loop down below. And now, given that I know how to tie a muncher with two strands, I simply execute that right here and I disregard this strand. Just disregard it. I'm going to form a muncher right here. And I don't really pay much attention to, you know, um, trying to line it up for no twists and turns. There might be a... Oh, uh, 180 degree twist in the line but this is just an emergency device wouldn't use it for my primary climbing method but there you have it as soon as I form it and I push down with my foot it takes load let's paint it up pop it over and here's how you take slack out without my foot on it and just pull the beaner down and the working end up see what's happening it's moving inside just like like you'd expect with a munter but as soon as I put load here it binds as soon as I put load you can sometimes get two two steps out by making one upward painting move and then you can sometimes get two steps out of it when climbing okay I'm gonna switch over to the larger rope but just make note Here's a couple other carabiners. Here's this large, uh, this happens to be a Petzl, but it's a large pear-shaped carabiner. Here's a really old climbing carabiner, a screw gate, about the same size. We want a large carabiner for this because we're going to be putting four strands through. And, you know, again, on 10 millimeter rope, I can still do it. I don't know if I could really pull this off with arborist diameter ropes. But don't worry about the arborist. They've got plenty of tools in their toolbox. Let's form it here, okay? Got my foot loop formed. Uh, you can't see my foot, obviously, out of view. Let's form a munter right here. Underhand loop to the left. Disregard that. Just disregard it. And carabiner goes through four strands. And again, the load lines are on the spine of the carabiner. Want to take slack out? Simply pull down on the carabiner and up on the line. Put your foot down, immediately takes load. Want to advance it, want to paint upward, you have to remove load with your foot. It pops, 
goes over, takes load. Okay, now how strong is it? I don't know exactly. So let's do a little test. I've got some weight just out of you. We're gonna we're gonna form one here. Okay, we're gonna form one right about here. And I'm working alone in my basement late at night, so you're gonna have to pardon me while I get things into position. So I've got got that loop there. I'm gonna clip that onto the weight. I'll take some slack out. Okay, that's good enough. And what I'll do is I will put the camera up to focus on the scale. Okay, so we are in kilonewtons. A kilonewton is 225 pounds. And just think of that as the, you know, the weight of a big person, right? A big person weighs 225 pounds. So that's, that's a nice thing about that system. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some weight on here. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm still in view. I am. 1.13 kilonewtons. I'm going to put some more weight in the form of me. In the form of me on this line. And look, I've got us at 2 kilonewtons. So 450 pounds and it is holding strong and after that load it's really no problem this still I can still pop it still paint it still remove it Got a JRB hitch here. Let's see how easy that comes off. And this is my JRB end loop just on the sheath of this rest tech. Let's see if that comes off. There you go. So I am not claiming that this is the strongest hitch in the world. Not at all. But as long as you know it holds twice our weight, it's obviously going to hold at least our weight, and it's just a foot loop. Okay, let's see that one more time. I'll form my my loop and right here with this being disregarded I will form my munter right here I make an underhand loop to the left and I find four strands the carabiner goes through all four strands and load is placed on the spine side. As soon as I place load, it holds in place. Want to shorten the loop. I pull down on the carabiner and up on the line. Watch it move. And if I want to paint it, and I'll go out of your field of view as I do this, I simply paint it up, paint it down, paint it up, paint it down, and adjust my slack. There you have it. The Munter Midline Munter End Loop or Foot Loop. Let me know if you've seen that before. And if you've got your carabiner in your goodie bag, you can always form this in the event of an emergency.